Hey everybody, my name is Taylor Glenn, and this is my channel Taylor Tries, where I try new things and I try to teach you new things. And today I'm going to try to teach you how to do flats or no spin throws with three clubs. Before I break down how to do flats, I want to take a moment and thank everyone who is a member of my Otter Club on Patreon. It's because of people like you that this tutorial is free for the rest of the world, and I really appreciate it. As members of my Patreon, you not only help me out, but you also get access to extended versions of many of my tutorials, including this one. In the extended version of this tutorial, I'm going to give you my tips and advice for how to do flats, but higher which I had a particularly hard time learning. You can watch that right now, plus all of the other extended tutorials for only $2, and it helps me out a lot. First, prerequisites. Since flats are just a type of throw, more like a tool that you can use for other patterns and tricks, I don't think you actually have to know a lot of other things in order to learn them. The only prerequisite I think is really necessary is knowing how to juggle three clubs in the three club cascade. That being said, I do think learning double spins is easier than learning flats. I have a tutorial breaking down how to do double spins. Flats are pretty self-explanatory. You're basically throwing the club up with no spin, which makes it come up flat. When you do this throw in juggling, we call that a flat. If you do it continuously, we usually refer to that as flats. You can incorporate a flat throw into many different patterns. You can also do flats with any number of objects. So you could do four club flats, five club flats. If you hear somebody say, I'm doing something flats, it just means they're doing that pattern with flat throws. Learning flats with one club is extremely important. If you can't throw a flat comfortably with one club, you're not gonna be able to do it with three. It's just not gonna work. Normally when we throw a club, we bring our hand down, maybe tilt our wrist down a little bit, and then we come back up. And because of the angle that our arm and our wrist creates when we come back up, the club is not only facing more towards us, it's also going to follow through with that momentum. So it spins towards us naturally. If we want to eliminate that spin, we basically have to let go of the club so that it's flat. So instead of letting go of it here, we have to let go of it here. So to do that, we're really gonna rely on pushing our hand and our wrist up flat with the club and really following through with that momentum so that it continues going up flat. So when we're bringing the club up flat like this, think about it like you're turning your fingers and your palm up. And when I do this, I really like to think about pushing and following through with that index finger and that joint right on my palm right here. It's that sweet spot right on that knuckle and that index finger. That is where the club is mostly in contact when we do a flat and we're going to sort of push up with that and follow through with that spot. We're gonna pull the club up, create that weird angle with our hand, almost like you're holding a serving tray like that. What this means is that you tend to release the club a little higher up than you normally would. If we're juggling three normally, we might be releasing the club more by our belly button, maybe a little higher, depending on who you are. But when you throw a flat, you're bringing your wrist up a little higher, you're following through with that club. So you're probably gonna end up releasing closer to your chest level. So take a second and just try to do that. We're gonna drop our hand down. When we come back up, try to bring the club flat up and then push up and follow through with your hand and release like that. And please practice this on both sides. You're going to need to know how to do it with your right and your left hand. Also, when you catch the club, I think it's helpful to try to keep that club flat when you're bringing it down for momentum instead of dropping it like we normally do. It's probably gonna be a slight dip, but it's probably gonna be less than when you're just doing singles. We wanna come down flat with the club as much as possible and release it up in that line. And just work on this a lot until you can do it fairly comfortably, back and forth with each side, and then we can try two. I'm also gonna be covering troubleshooting at the end. So even if you're stuck on one club or two clubs or three clubs and you're having issues, make sure you check out the troubleshooting. Okay, two, yay, so fun. First exercise is a flat and a flat, two flats in a row, one from each hand. This is the most important exercise with two. It's going to really set you up for learning three. And it's pretty self-explanatory. To do that, we're just going to do two flats in a row. We're gonna keep in mind everything we just did. Up, up. Now do the other side. It's important to do the other side. Up, up. This is a tough exercise. You're probably gonna start doing some bad habits and having a hard time with those spins. That's okay. 
Just take your time. We really want to be slow with flats. One, two, catch. One, two, catch. So don't, don't do that. That's pretty hard. Work on that a lot, get comfortable with it. Start making that muscle memory to where you don't have to think about throwing a flat. We really wanna just get that motion easy. So we're gonna do a single and then a flat. That's this exercise. And that's pretty self-explanatory, single, flat. Now you can practice this on both sides. I don't think it's really necessary at this point in your flat journey. I'd say work on doing the single from your non-dominant hand and then the flat with your dominant hand. So single, flat, non-dominant, dominant. It's never a bad idea to work on both sides. If you wanna work on this, that's fine. I just personally found that really hard and kind of unnecessary until I was already good at flats. Most important is your non-dominant hand doing a single and then a flat right after it. Because that's how we're gonna get into flats. My biggest tip for that is very similar to that two flat exercise. Resist the urge to rush throwing that flat right after that single. We don't wanna do that. Single, flat, nice and slow. The last two club exercise I think is helpful is to go from a flat into a single. And that's essentially so we can get out of flats and go back into single spins. So to do that, we're just going to throw a flat and then a single, just like that. And it's probably best to practice this on both sides, flat, single, flat, single. And this is just going to help us transition out of flats back into single spins. It's the least important of the three exercises in my opinion, but it's really good to work on. Work on that a bit. Like I said, it's not the most important exercise, but it will help you getting out of flats. All right, three club flats. This is where stuff gets sketchy, but it's gonna be okay. The unfortunate thing, in my opinion, about flats is it's really hard to start it just from a cold start, which means we're going to learn from single spins. This is where that second club exercise is going to come in handy. Just try one flat with your dominant hand, and then go back into the singles. So if you're starting with your right hand, it's also a good idea to do the left. I will say that I personally had a really hard time starting flats with my left hand from singles. And I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more after I teach you these couple exercises with three clubs. I would say if you're just learning right now, don't try to do that. I think it's better just to try to do it with your dominant hand. Just one throw with your dominant hand. And then I'll talk about doing that non-dominant hand after these exercises. For this exercise, just do one with your dominant hand. One, one. A good overall tip for that is to slow your whole cascade down. So a lot of time when we do three, we're like this, don't try to do that. Instead of being here, slow it down. One. That should help you control that flat a lot better. Once you feel pretty good throwing a flat from your dominant hand with singles every so often, let's do the second exercise. Okay, the second exercise is to throw two flats in a row and then go back to singles. Just like that first two club exercise we did. One, two, and then back into the single spins. One, two, singles. Now again, my advice for this, slow it down. Slow the cascade down before you start. One, two, and then go back into a slow cascade. Slow your whole pattern down, that will help. Second tip I have for this is mentally, just focus on the flats. Don't think about the singles. You can do this. Think about those two flat throws. One, two. And then after that, just kind of turn off your brain and go back into single spins. Let autopilot kick in. One, two. Whew. Normally I would say do three catches and then four catches. I think with flats, it's not as helpful. I know for me, once I did three throws, 
easier just to keep going. But I do highly recommend that you work on just the one throw and then the two throws. Those are gonna help your form a lot. But then once we get to three, let's just try to keep going. Try to do as many as you can. And then anytime you start feeling like you're gonna lose it, either collect or ideally try to go back into singles so that you can get used to that transition. So for here, one, two, three, four, and then go back to singles or stop. One thing I really had to pay attention to when I was trying to run flats was keeping that dropping in that line as much as possible. So really avoiding dropping down like this. You really want to sort of drop down like that and push back up. We wanna keep that club flat. And when we start doing three continuously, that disappears really quickly. So really try to keep that in mind of keeping them flat as long as possible. And those are the exercises with three clubs to do flats. Now I do wanna say that once you can get a few throws of flats, maybe four or five, and you're starting to get more comfortable throwing that, I think it's a good idea to go back to that first exercise where you're just throwing one and then back into singles and try to do it with your non-dominant hand. And I recommend doing that for as long as you're having to think about flats, as long as you're working on this trick. It is always a good idea to go back and work on that first exercise and eventually start working on it with both sides. It allows you to really pay attention to your form. You can start correcting problems and you can do that with both sides with one throw. But when you're first learning, I think it's really hard to do single, flat, single. So that's why I recommended it the way I did. But once you can do a couple of flats in a row, go back to that first exercise and work on it, thinking about all of the form things and start correcting each hand individually, getting those flats perfect. Okay, troubleshooting. This is a big one for this trick because there's a lot of stuff that can go wrong. The first problem is probably the most common. I still struggle with it sometimes. You're trying to do a flat, but it ends up curving back towards you still, or you're actually overdoing it and it's curving back that way. Let's start with this first one. If it's overspinning towards you, just like a half spin, it's probably because you're not pushing up and following through enough with your palm and your wrist. We don't wanna just pull up our arm because then it's still gonna twist. We really wanna push up and keep the club flat. Go back and work on it with one and two before you try to do it with three if you're having that problem. And again, it really helps me to feel that spot on my index finger and that knuckle and just kind of push up with that and really follow through with it. That will hopefully prevent it from coming back towards you. Now, if you have the problem I often have where it's going away from you and overspinning that way, it's probably because you're doing that too much. You're pushing too much and following through too much with your wrist. You just gotta be more subtle with it. You wanna follow through to a point and then let it continue up like that. If you're following through too much and the club is pointing down when you release, it's going to go forward. Really think about following through, pushing up with the rest of your hand so that it's going up flat and not pushing forward like that. Another common problem I see, especially when you start doing three, is that those clubs are getting too wide like this. If you're releasing it too straight on, a lot of the time we can have a tendency to overdo it that way and it'll come down at a weird angle. We'll end up having to do our flats really wide, which is bad for you and just is harder to control. So try to have a slight angle, not too much, because if we do too much, then it is also really hard. So just a slight angle, we still want the club straight as possible, but we want it to be straight with a slight angle. A lot of the time they'll end up catching it like that. So pay attention if you are trying to catch it in that overhand position. A lot of the time it's because your pattern's just a little too wide and that's what your brain is trying to do to correct it, bring it in. It's nice and narrow. The last problem I wanna talk about is throwing away from you, which is very common. People will throw out with flats. The tendency sometimes is to push forward like that, but that will make the club go forward. We really wanna try to keep our elbows in, touching our sides and pulling up straight up rather than pulling up out. We wanna come straight up and try to just keep the clubs as close to you as possible. It can be scary, but it will help. So we wanna push up like that, 
not like that. So that is my tutorial on how to do flats with three clubs. Once you feel comfortable just doing the cascade, I recommend playing around with doing things like 4-2-3 variations or Mills Mess with flats. It can be a really fun throw to incorporate into all of your other three club patterns, but really get comfortable with the cascade first. It's probably a good idea. If you're a member of my Otter Club on Patreon, the tutorial's not over. I'm going to give you my tips and advice for how to throw higher flats because that's surprisingly hard to do. If you want access to that, it's only $2, plus you get all of the other extended tutorials, and it just helps me out. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Have fun doing flats, and I'll see you next time. That was a bad idea. It was just not a good way to try to end it. I don't know what I was thinking. Where I try new things, and I try to teach you.